We'll now talk about money market yields. Money market is the market for short-term debt instruments. The most common short-term debt instrument in most markets is a six-month government T-bill. This is an example of a pure discount instrument and what that means is the following. When the government issues a six-month T-bill, it says that at the end of six months, it will pay back a thousand dollars and the amount that the government collects initially might be nine hundred and fifty dollars. This is from the government perspective. From the investor perspective, he is purchasing the bond for or the T-bill for nine hundred and fifty. So that's the investment. Six months later, he will receive the face value of thousand. The interest of 50 over here is a discount relative to the $1,000 face value. The market where a T-bill such as this trades would be called a money market. We also have short-term instruments which are based on a borrowed amount plus interest. So it is possible that the it is possible that a company issues a short-term bond where the company borrows a thousand dollars initially and then pays back a thousand dollars plus five percent interest at the end of one year. So this would be an example of borrowed amount plus interest. In any case, the market where short term instruments such as this trade is called the money market and in this segment we will talk about the various kinds of yields that are used in this market. Here is the list of yields and we will discuss each one of them. The first one is bank discount yield and this is used with T-bills. Bank discount yield is equal to the discount divided by the face value multiplied by 360 over number of days remaining till maturity. Let's say the government issues a bond for 950. So this is how much investors pay for the bond. And the face value is 1000, which means that after six months, assuming this is a six month T-bill, the investor will get a thousand. What is the bank discount yield on this instrument? If we use this formula, the discount is 50. That is the discount relative to the face value. We then divide by the face value, which is 1000, and then multiply it by 360. That is the convention used when we calculate bank discount yield. Divided by number of days to maturity. Six months means 180 days. Generally, we take 30 days per month over here. If you do the calculation, you will get 0 0.1 which is equal to 10%. So 10% here is the bank discount yield. If you look at this formula carefully, you should be able to detect three issues. The first one is that the interest amount, which is the discount, $50 over here, is divided by the face value, 1000, rather than the investment amount, which is 950. What we normally do when calculating a yield is divide by the investment amount, but that is not what happens when we compute the bank discount yield. The second issue is that we are using simple interest. In other words, 50 over 1000 gives us a rate. And then given that we have a six month instrument to annualize, we are simply multiplying by two, 360 over 180. So we are using simple interest rather than compounding. And finally, we are using a 360 day year rather than a 365 day year. Next, we move to the holding period yield, which we have discussed briefly before. Essentially, this is the yield over the investment period. In the example that I just discussed, if we invest 950 at time zero and six months later we get a thousand back, 
then the holding period yield is 50 divided by 950 950 being the investment amount and this is equal to 5.26 percent in this particular case other than thousand the investor doesn't get anything else if this were a coupon paying bond and the investor were to get a coupon payment then obviously that would be also included in the holding period yield if this were a stock and the investor were to get a dividend at the end then both the capital gain end price minus beginning price and the dividend would be considered so again the holding period yield is simply the total yield or return over the investment period the investment period could be six months three months and so on next we'll talk about the money market yield the money market yield is simply the holding period yield multiplied by 360 over t in our example the holding period yield was 0 0.0526 so we take 0 0.0526 multiplied by 360 divided by t t here is the number of days to maturity let's say it is a six month instrument so that becomes two the money market yield then is 10.53 percent notice that the money market yield is greater than the bank discount yield and that is because we are using holding period yield where we divide interest by the initial investment with the money market yield we only have two issues the first one is simple interest given that we have a holding period yield which is simply being multiplied by two and the second is that we use a 360 day year the issue that we had with bank discount yield where we divide by the face value rather than the investment amount that issue does not exist with the money market yield and finally the most precise measure is the effective annual yield where we take one plus the holding period yield in our example that the effective annual yield is one plus the holding period yield raised to the power of 365 over 180 minus one so notice that we are compounding now given that we are using a exponent we are using a 365 day year and since we have the holding period yield return is based on the initial investment and not the face value so the effective annual yield does not have any issues and this number is also higher compared to both the bank discount yield and the money market yield now i want you to try this question where we have a 90 day t bill which is purchased for 990 the face value is 1000 so use the formulas that you've learnt and come up with your answers before you go to the next slide here is what you should come up with the bank discount yield is the face value minus the investment amount so this is the discount number divided by the face value multiplied by four four because we have a 90 day instrument so 360 over 90 is four we get 0.04 which means the bank discount yield is four percent the holding period yield is simply the final value divided by the investment minus one so that is 0 0.0101 or 1.01 percent we could have also simply done 10 divided by 990 990 being the investment amount this will give us the same answer money market yield is the holding period yield into 360 over 90 that gives us 4.04 percent which is higher than the bank discount yield and with effective annual yield we take one plus the holding period yield and then raise to the power of 365 over 90 minus one and this gives us 4.16 percent at times you might be required to convert between different yield numbers and in different textbooks you might see complicated formulas to do this 
But rather than memorize complicated formulas, I think it is best if you simply understand the concept. Let us now talk about converting between different yield measures. Say you are given the fact that the money market yield is 12% for a 6-month T-bill and you are asked to find the bank discount yield. The way you do this is first compute the holding period yield given a 12% money market yield and given that you know the formula for the money market yield you can compute the holding period yield then recognizing the fact that if you have a par value of 1000 and you know the holding period yield that means you can find the discount if you know the discount then you also know the investment amount which is 1000 minus d you can then easily find the bank discount yield by simply doing d divided by 1000 multiplied by 360 over t so in some textbooks you'll find complicated formulas but the concept is fairly straightforward the trick is to find the holding period yield and then use that to come up with the discount and then once you have the discount you can calculate the bank discount yield if you have the money market yield it is easy to come up with the effective annual yield because again you first compute the holding period yield and then the effective annual yield is simply 1 plus the holding period yield raised to the power of 365 over t minus 1 if you are given the bank discount yield then based on the bank discount yield you can come up with the discount and if you know the discount and you know the par value you can come up with the investment amount which will simply be the par value minus the discount you can then compute the holding period yield which is essentially the discount divided by the investment amount and then the money market yield is simply the holding period yield into 360 over t and finally bank discount yield to effective annual yield here again once you have the holding period yield it is easy to compute the effective annual yield and the formula has been shown a couple of times already the bond equivalent yield is a slightly tricky concept i will explain it briefly over here but we will see this in a lot more detail later when we cover fixed income securities bond equivalent yield is simply two times the semi-annual yield and this convention is used with bonds because almost all over the world bonds pay a coupon every six months or semi-annually Let's say that you purchase a bond for $1,000 and in return you receive a $40 coupon every six months and then you receive the par value of 1000 at the end of year four. Notice here that with a $1,000 investment you are getting $40 of 4% every six months. The bond equivalent yield is simply two times the semi-annual yield of 4%. So the bond equivalent yield is 8%. Notice that the effective yield, however, will be more because the effective annual yield is going to be 1.04 raised to the power of 360 or 365 divided by 180 minus 1. And this is going to be slightly more than 8%. But again, in terms of the bond equivalent yield all we do is come up with the six month yield which is also the semi-annual yield and multiply it by two that brings us to the end of this reading and to summarize the main points we talked about the concept of net present value which is simply the present value of future cash flows minus the present value of the investment a positive NPV means that you are adding value and that is good. Negative NPV means that you should not accept those projects. Internal rate of return is that return which makes the NPV equal to zero. And you want to accept projects where the internal rate of return is greater than the opportunity cost. 
we then talked about portfolio return measurement and discussed the holding period yield then we talked about the money weighted return and time weighted return and finally we talked about different money market yields the key items to know over here are the formulas for the bank discount yield the money market yield and the effective annual yield and also the fact that the holding period yield can be used to go or convert between these different yield measures final remarks as i say at the end of every reading go over the learning objectives in the curriculum and make sure that you understand all of them the examples and practice problems in the curriculum for this reading are a little bit difficult you can try to do them but if you have problems don't worry too much at the very least try to read the solutions and make as much sense of them as you can but it is extremely important that you practice as many questions as possible from various other sources such as schweizer the practice problems that we provide and so on if you do sufficient practice this material is going to be easy also the material that you see here is foundation material for what will come in many other parts of the course so make sure you understand time value of money and the various applications of time value of money very well that's it for now